When the Night Comes Out presents Jump Scares. Today's bite-sized horror is entitled One Year. Written by Brian W. Alaspa. Narrated and produced by Ali James. Dalton sat in the chair and shifted his considerable weight around. The shackles affixed to his ankles and his wrists, and then attached at his waist to a huge leather belt, were tight against his massive wrists. His dark hair hung down over his equally dark eyes, and he ground his teeth, the massive muscles in his neck working and shifting beneath the flesh. Around him, the room was dark, and behind him were three men, all of them heavily armed. A table sat in front of him, and beyond that was a small space that ended in a door. He had been in worse places, but never in so much trouble. The door opened, and a man in a uniform walked in. Dalton shifted again, but did not stand up. He was obviously a general, but he hadn't been saluting generals before and decided not to start now. The man was tall, with gray hair around his temples. He had chiseled features and broad shoulders, and the creases in his uniform were sharp enough to cut someone. He sat down, straightening his pants, and took out a folder which he slapped down on the table. When he opened it, Dalton saw his mugshot and papers that contained his name. Dalton, he said. Dalton smirked. Got yourself in a quite a bit of trouble this time, didn't you? He asked. Dalton shuffled his feet. Let me ask you a question, Dalton, and I need an honest answer. The general closed the folder and folded his hands. Dalton shrugged. Have you ever heard of the Defender? He asked. Dalton blinked and cleared his throat. Pardon? The Defender. The General repeated. Have you heard of him? Dalton shrugged. Of course. Kind of hard to miss. He's a superhero, wears the blue and black tights, and flies around like some freaky pansy. (laughs) Super strong, super fast, can fly, run fast shoot beams from his eyes. Yeah, he's also supposedly indestructible and supposedly from another planet. The general nodded. Yes, that would be him. Good. Glad when you aren't committing crimes while wearing a uniform, you follow the real world. Now, I have to tell you something, and then make you an offer. If you refuse to take the offer, well, I have here in my pocket a needle and syringe. When I inject you with it, you'll forget this entire conversation ever took place. Plus, there is the off chance that you could end up a drooling vegetable. Now, do you want to hear this? Dalton shrugged. The man you know as the Defender was, indeed, an alien from another planet. Life on his planet was dying, and his people sent him here. When he got into our atmosphere, it was discovered that he had vast powers— The U.S. military found him, raised him, groomed him, and then turned him over to a consortium of the most powerful businessmen in the world. They created his image, his costume, and decided what his backstory should be. And then he set out to defend the world. That's the part that you and most of the world actually know. Now, here's the part that you don't. The general shifted in his seat and leaned forward. He arrived here on this planet nearly 70 years ago. He was vastly powerful and nearly indestructible except for one thing. The energies his body released were burning him out. He only had roughly 15 years before it completely burned him out, and he died. Dalton frowned. What? But he's still out there, flying around and doing stuff. The general smiled. Before he died, the man known as the Defender worked with our top scientists and created a kind of process. It involves chemicals and serums and all kinds of real sci-fi stuff, but it confers the powers of the Defender on certain men. These men are selected for their health and body type, and 
quite frankly, their overall appearance and how much it resembled the Defender. Then they get the power of the Defender, work for us and the businessmen that I mentioned, and serve the greater good for all of humanity. See, the man originally known as the Defender died ages ago. But the myth, the thing that gives people hope, well, that goes on. Dalton blinked. Why are you telling me this? The general looked at the papers on his folder. You've been convicted of many things, Dalton. At least 15 of them will put you in prison for the rest of your life, and I can bet that you'll be buried in the max prison that lies beneath one of the Rocky Mountains. You'll see the sun once a year. You'll be buried, Dalton. He closed the folder and folded his hands again. If you agree, we'll give you the powers and abilities of the Defender, he said. You'll work with us and defend the world and give hope to the hopeless and continue to show that America has total dominance in all things. You have the build, you have the right look. Most importantly, you have nothing to lose, especially when I tell you the hitch. Dalton shifted in his seat, the chains on his wrists and ankles jingling. And what's the hitch? The process confers great power. You'll have all the powers and abilities of the Defender. However, the process burns out a human. The most you can expect, if you're lucky, is to live one year. The silence between them was deafening. So, that's the deal. You can spend the rest of your life buried under a mountain, never seeing the sun. Or you can spend a year free, literally flying under your own power around the world. But after that year... Dalton said. I'll be dead. The general nodded, and then he leaned back in his chair. Dalton shook his head. All of this was so hard to take in in one shot. Yes, he was looking at the rest of his life in prison. Yes, he was likely to end up in the supermax prison beneath a mountain. But was it worth it to give all of that up to become the prancing hero with the government and big business pulling his strings? He laughed. Really, what choice did he have? Okay, sir, he said. You've got yourself a deal. Thanks for listening to When the Night Comes Out, Jump Scares. Be sure to like, share, and review. You can binge our first two seasons of full-length stories now. Until next time, try to stay safe. When the night comes out. Hey guys, we appreciate your continued support, but we also would like to create a community around When the Night Comes Out. A community of horror fiction fans who support us so we can bring you even more stories, more scares, expand what we offer, and maybe even podcast merch. So be sure to visit patreon.com slash when the night comes out and become a supporter. Every amount helps. We'll see you next time when the night comes out.